the extraordinary belongs to those that create it. Rebelling against business plans and debt, rebelling against what society expects of us to build cool businesses, make money, have fun and do good. Let's create something extraordinary together. Welcome to The Rebel Entrepreneur. Today, we have two people on the podcast. Obviously, as this series is entirely about Christina, she is back. Christina, Fresh Print Media, you're back, looking fabulous. How are you today? I'm back. I'm great. How are you? I'm good. Slightly warm in Mexico. It's going through a hot period down here, but I'm enjoying it massively, including getting slightly fatter from the mole. And we've also got with us today, Henry Nicholson, who works at the Rebel Business School. Henry was the first person that I ever hired on my own. Like I hired people for other businesses, but Henry was the first person I've ever hired on my own. And I've not been able to get rid of him since. So he's here. And Henry like now runs most of the Rebel School. He is phenomenal. And on the side, he has a side hustle, building websites for people and helping them develop their businesses. And he also runs most of our website Wednesday courses. But before we dive into that, Henry, Christina, like, tell us, where are you with your website? What's going on? So I have a website. There's that. It's been up for about... <laughs> it's a good start. <laughs> yeah. It's been up since like maybe early 2018. So it's about three years old. I'm very good at putting a website up. I've done many of them. I do them for clients here and there. But as far as like what grabs people, what converts, what gets them to like, you know, even I had no call to action, which is something we fixed last year. I had no like easy way to send a message and call to action. So we added that last year. But other than that, I haven't really done anything except just put some stuff up there. And I think I last added additional photos or like newer work, maybe close to a year ago. So it's not super intentional. I haven't taken the time to sit down. It's like the task I've been dreading is sitting down and saying, how could I make this more intentional? And one of the things that I've been kind of thinking about is, you know, I focus on photography, but I do some other work for some of my clients. Generally, I do photos and something for them, whether it's editing, some graphic work. A lot of people now are asking for video. So I do some websites for some of them as well. So the link that I shared is something that I kind of recently came across these folks on another podcast, actually. And I liked how they were also kind of, they're photography based, but they do stuff that's adjacent. And their website, instead of focusing on just portfolios of photos for different topics, is more project by project. So I was like, that might be a good way to have a gallery of things. And when you click in, it's not just the photos. It could be like, oh, this one was photo and video. This one was photos and graphics. So I kind of thought maybe that was the direction I wanted to go. It would speak more to the work I've done. But that's kind of, uh, that's just where I'm at now. Haven't updated anything in a while. It's not intentional. It probably doesn't convert well. Which actually the made shop is the made shop.com. It's actually quite a beautiful website with some great graphics on there. The first question we should ask, and I know Henry's going to jump on this in a second. I think the first question we should ask is, what is it that you want from your website? Because I think quite often we get so focused on, I need a website for my business. We forget to ask us the question, what's the objective? I think at the end of the day, I want it to be a really great place to showcase what I do and really host my portfolio. I think at the end of the day, they might have received the link from me. I might have reached out and they're clicking through. And it has to be like a really great example of what I can pull off. You said some really, really insightful stuff about your website and in response to that question starting with the end in mind is something that we say a lot about a lot of things and it's very much the case with websites you know we want to know why does this thing exist what's the point of this being online and your last comment you know that you made there your last comment about i don't see the website going out and getting me clients you know like it'll do what it does maybe a couple of people will find me through uh, seo and all that kind of stuff but actually nine times out of 10, people are going to use this website as a brochure. I'm going to have handed this to them and they're going to see my work and that's going to further promote conversations. And you know what? That is probably 99% of websites on the on the internet. It's it's this really interesting belief or, or this, I guess we go to this this sort of preset when we think about websites, we go to this preset that a website should bring me business. 
and it's it's not necessarily true you know and and, and i mean christina you know this probably uh, more than anyone because you build so many for other clients as well that the website will exist and it will be in the ether but you know especially these days people don't just stumble across them we've got to put websites in front of people and we have to do the marketing work and the sales work to make them relevant and basically the website should act as a sales tool and that's exactly as you've described it it's a sales tool you know people will use it they'll look through previous work they'll they should be able to look at your work or look at your website and see their brand you know, they should be able to see themselves in the work that you've done previously. And that's what this stuff's all about. Now, obviously, that's saying that as as your business, you know, as your service-based business. If you were running a, a product-based business, it would be slightly different because that's where the sale is going to make. The transaction happens on that web page, whereas for you, it's to spark conversation. And I think that's something that we vastly overlook when we're designing websites. You know, we ex- we think that websites should do everything. We think that the sale should be made there. We think that's where the money should go. But actually, I think the way that you've got it set up currently and the way that you described it in response to Alan's initial question, which, by the way, I don't remember anymore because I've spoken for so long, that, you know, the reason your website exists to to spark conversation. And I think that's an amazing, amazing way. And I think that's exactly where it should be. So then the question becomes, if the purpose of the web fight is to host the portfolio and so that you can send it to prospective clients who look at it and then once they've looked at it, because you've sent them the link, once they've looked at it, they then go, this is great. We want to hire Christina. The question is, is it currently doing that? Are you proud when you send it out? Does it work for you in that way? Do you send it out and then they come back to you? How's that performing on its purpose? I mean, I send it to people. I don't feel bad about it. Like it's, it, it's not embarrassing. That makes me want to ask what you have done in the pra. <laughs> Always a good start. I've been embarrassed by a lot of the websites I've created over the years. And I have a very low standard. I mean, it's not embarrassing, but I it just don't think it's... Because right now it's just galleries of photos divided by... It's not, not even that many. It's like three galleries of photos divided loosely by topic. And so it's like, oh, you can take a nice photo of a thing, right? That's kind of like what's happening. But what I liked about the sample, the made job I sent you is how it was like portfolio by project. I, I like the idea of first off being like, hey, this is my site. This is my portfolio. And then each uh, project would have its own link, right? So it would be like, I, you know, when reaching out, I could be like, specifically, I think these are some relevant projects to your brand. So it would also allow me to almost have like my mini portfolios. And I like that that speaks to like, more of the project-based gallery versus just here's a blob of cocktail photos. It allows you to show how you kind of like, if you're shooting, say, a campaign, like spring cocktails in my glassware or something, it says, oh, here's how we were able to shoot like actually a full campaign. Like this is what it all looked like. We had this banner and this video and a reel and a, you know, it kind of allows you to see the big picture of like, if you were to book a shoot with me, you would get this like great bit of assets that all work together that's the purpose of all websites is it's, it just needs to be pretty that's 90 percent of the work okay so that's that's really cool it sort of makes me want to ask forgetting the website at the moment what are the main selling points what do you think the best bits about your business are why do people work with you and I, th- I think it's a two-part thing why people work for me one of the things is that the people i've worked for in the past when i was you know at a corporate place and we had pr and we had content creators or photographers coming in to do things for us, some of them could be very difficult to work with. And it wasn't a pleasant experience. So I strive really hard to just create a pleasant experience and work well with others. And then the second part is, is that I create a good output, a good product. You know, right now, photo and video is is a necessity. No matter what your marketing is, if you're doing billboards or you're doing Facebook ads, you have to have something that makes you stop and look just to copy alone and paying for the ad, you know, you have to have an image. Yeah, I totally agree. I totally agree. And so so what's interesting about your answer, and I love your answer, by the way, I think it's awesome. What I loved about your answer is that the process and the experience came first. And that might have been subconscious, or that might have been purposeful. But the, you know, the fact that you're easy to work with and you get it. I think that's the big thing here is that you've, you've worked in that industry, the, the industry that are buying from you and you get it and you know what that process is going to be like. So you're able to make it as 
easy as humanly possible. And, you know, like speaking from experience in that, there is nothing more painful than having to buy one product from one service and then you having to do all of the hard work to translate it over to the next people, you know, whether that's photos to PR or photos to website, et cetera. That's hugely valuable. So, so with that in mind then, and this is just one, this is just one route that we can go down, with that in mind that the experience, the customer experience is the smoothest that you can get in this industry, does your website reflect that? I mean, right now, one of the issues with my website is that I wrote the copy three years ago and I probably didn't spend that much time on it. It wasn't intentional. I didn't even know. I just kind of started my business and I didn't even know what it was doing yet. And it's shifted so much in this time as any kind of like startup side hustle might. And it's just so it's like I need to go like the homepage I know doesn't speak at all to what I do. So what's stopping you from updating it little by little? each day so taking one bit where you go i'm going to do the banner today and then tomorrow i'm going to do the first sentence or the first paragraph what stopped you from from doing those bits i don't know it just feels hard (laughs) oh i have to find the login and i have to log in and i have to turn my brain on and i have to think about it's just like a lot do you have like a list of things to do and one of them is update website and it never gets done yeah yeah, I mean, it would probably help if I broke it down and was just like, just update a part of the website. But it's like just this big looming thing. Which that is exactly what happens to everyone. That's exactly it. Like people go, oh, I've got to update the whole website and it must be done. And then it just sits there because every time they look at it, they go, I don't have time for that right now. That's a big project. Like I don't even have time to start. Whereas if they just had like update banner image, that's all I need to do. Take me like half an hour to come up with an idea and do that. Or maybe it's like you've got four banner images that move across. Maybe it's just your first action is decide what I want on my banner. That's it. And then when you actually see that on your list, you can go, okay, I can decide what I want on my banner. Like that's my first job. And that's breaking it down and making it easy steps. But I think so many people see build website as one item and they go, I've got to build my website and then they never start. Whereas actually it is, decide on image one for homepage. That's all I want you to do is today do that one thing. And I'll tell you what, if you did one thing a day on it that took you 10 minutes, today, update sentence one. Tomorrow, update sentence two. By the end of the year, you would have made 365 tiny improvements to your website and it would be an entirely different looking machine that would get you entirely different results. Step one is let's break this down into manageable chunks that you go, okay, I could do that in 10 minutes tomorrow. And then I feel like I've moved on and I can do the next thing and the next thing. That would be where I would start. What's the very simple next action? And Maybe that's what we should do. If you're listening to this right now, there's two things I would like you to do. Number one is get your own website up. And as Henry and I grill Christina and ask (laughs) awkward questions, Please imagine that we're grilling you at the same time and look at your website through these lenses. So the questions we ask Christina, like what's the outcome you want and does it do this? And what's the first thing people see? Ask yourself the same questions about your website. And number two, open up freshprintmedia.com and have a look. You're probably seeing an updated version. Hopefully you're seeing an updated version and Christina's made some changes by the time this episode comes out. But have a look at it and see if you can answer the same questions having looked through Christina's website, because it is fascinating when you do this stuff and break it down. Henry, what do you think of that? Where should we head next? So just while Alan's been talking, I've been just flicking through your website, Christina, in a more of a detailed manner, because I think, you know, we sort of jumped in at top level, like, what's this thing doing? What's this? Why does it exist? What's, What's it about? And I think jumping in at a more detailed level, there's a couple of things that I would that I want to draw attention to based on what you've you've said about your business and what you want to do. The number one service that you offer is photography. And you know, and we we've, we've spoken about that a few times and and by the way your work is incredible. I absolutely love it and it's made me very thirsty. Um but we're not allowed to drink on the podcast. So 
we are where we are. Who, um, who said that, Henry? Who, yeah, who put that like, rule in place? I think uh, I'm sure I've seen Christina with a glass of something when we've been doing these podcasts. It's always morning for me, so it's water or coffee. But I don't remember <laughs> any. I'll never set any hard rules. Why? Why am I only knowing this now? Well, it's, what is it now? 6.30 in England, Henry. It's after the day's work. Like, we're having water, but you feel free to crack on. It might help with your creativity. Literally, it's 6.30 in the UK. We're in the pub at four. Uh, what am I doing? <laughs> I'm still here. I'm in my room. Uh, anyway. I drink a warm back... beer. Be oh, yeah. Love a warm beer. It's nothing better than that. Anyway, back to what's actually important. What's also important. Sorry, because that is important too. So your main product and your main service is photography. And... What, what do you, what would you expect to see when you if you go onto a photography website? What do you think is the most prominent thing that you should be seeing? Photography photos. Yeah, yeah. You, you hopefully good ones for the most part, and and the photos you've got on yours are extremely good. However, and there's always a however, yours have text overlaying them, and we've darkened the picture and we've put overlays over it, and actually the picture, the image, is now no longer the prominent thing, and. Pictures transfer messages 20,000 times faster than words. So actually, you know, somebody looking at your website, they should be able to see or at least get an idea for what you do or the service that you provide. So, you know, for example, if we are selling photography to drinks companies, that's what we want to see first and foremost, because it's that visual that transfers that message faster. Then the text accompanies it and it sort of highlights the main things and that's where we want to jump into the realms of the easiest process in the industry the most understanding thing you know and that that kind of stuff around the the value that you add because at the moment i'm I'm looking at it the pictures are great but they're just covered up by words and then you know as we scroll down we do see more but actually on your home page you've got four pictures Mm, yeah uh yeah well if you count the banner yes Okay, the banner counts as maybe two or three. Okay, so we've got six. And then when you compare that to the maid shop, which you've said is you really like that sort of style, it's images straight off the bat and it's nothing but images, actually. So I'm just sort of thinking that, you know, if there's something that we can draw from, I think it's putting what you do and your, I would almost go as far as putting your portfolio as your homepage and they should only be seeing your work. Because actually, if you're sending people that have already had a conversation with you to the website, then they don't need any other context. So it's understanding what this website's trying to achieve, understanding who is going to be looking at it. And, and in your case, you know, nine times out of 10, it's an existing conversation. They've probably not bought yet, but they're, they're thinking about it. They're making the right noises. Then we just need to make sure that they get to 100% value as quickly as humanly possible. If we are just sending, if we're sending them to the homepage, do you, where, do you send them to the portfolio specifically or do you just send them the website link? I'll send, generally send them to the link to the portfolio that makes the most sense, which lately with what we've been focusing on has been the food and beverage. But, you know, if it made more sense to send a different one. But yeah, I'd send them to the specific link because, you know, I'm like, well, if they go to the homepage, I know it's not like saying what it should say or showing what it should show so and i don't want them to get lost and not find the actual photos that i want them to see so i just send a specific link and and that's fine too you know that that's we as long as they're getting to the right place as quickly as possible that's the most important thing but what i'm thinking is you know for for those people that maybe go back to your website to have a look because there will be some clients that maybe two three months later they'll go actually i'm going to go back to christine and see what she's up to you know, we, we want to make it as easy as possible for them to get from A to B. So uh, I'm almost thinking, why don't we turn the homepage into a title page for your portfolio so that it just goes, you know, food and beverage, spaces, people, etc., etc. That's a really interesting idea because you can have the image and then do that thing where you roll the mouse over the image and it turns the other way and goes, this was for this company promoting this product so that people know they see the image, roll their mouse over, and they're like, oh, that's interesting. That one's promoting whiskey for this business. This one's promoting the food for this restaurant. They're instantly seeing what your product is, who you do it for, and how it helps them. And I think that's really going to make it come to life quickly. Because at the moment, I see a bunch of pictures, and then I go, they're nice. Yeah, you don't know the context. or I want to go, like, look at the picture, go, oh, that's nice. And then go, oh, it was used to promote this. 
oh, it's used in the campaign this way. Look, there's the campaign and there's the bits and I can click on it. And I think the one you've looked at from Made, the maker shop, is actually really good because the picture rolls over, it tells you the project, then you can click on the project and it shows you all the examples and how they used it. And it's really easy to click through. I can see why you love it. And I think we could do a version whereby just create one of those for a client, just one to start with. Here's the project. And like maybe under food and beverage, you have three of this one project's images and it clicks, all three pictures click through to the same page that show that client's outputs and the results. The danger with looking at a website such as the one we've looked at with the maid shop, I bet you this is like version 75 of what they've done. They have put a lot of money, time and effort into this and we need to get the simplest possible version because this will be version two of your website or version three or whatever it is. Um, The simplest possible version that has one really good example of what you've done for a client. And I think once we get that, we can work on a second one in three months' time. (laughs) Um, But for now, let's just get one good one up there. Yeah, I think that that's an insanely important point. And I guess that's that's sort of I think that's that's a massively important point, Al, that you touched on is don't try and do all of it. And this is something that the, the Rebel School courses that we say time and time again, and it's either with websites or it's with social, any part of the business, really, it's just little and often are the three most important words when it comes to web design. Because, you know, you don't need to update every single page. You don't need to check every single link. You don't need to make sure every single paragraph is spelt correctly. It doesn't even need to say anything about your business. Just do it little bits at a time and do it to a point where you're really happy with it. Because if you try and do all of it, none of it's going to go very well. And, you know, the amount of people I've seen that throw laptops, close them in a huff, drop them. We had one guy in in a place called Newport in Wales that uh, he took his laptop outside and shot it because he got so frustrated with a drag and drop web builder. <laughs> it, it was the f- I wasn't there yeah. for that one. I've never seen a laptop shooting at an event. <laughs> he, he didn't do it at the event. Thankfully, that I, I didn't want to fill in the health and safety. He, he did it at home that evening. And it, Technology's got this brilliant ability to go directly to the most infuriating state that I've ever been in. And it happens you know, day in, day out. And I think that's where this little and often thing comes from. Because if you try and do all of it and it starts to go wrong, suddenly all of it goes wrong. But if you do a couple of sentences, maybe a paragraph, maybe a page if you're feeling um, brave, you start to build out this this really valuable thing that you're super happy with, and also you understand every inch. So it's it's easier to pull this thing apart when if the website's not doing what it needs to be doing, it's easier to figure out where it's going wrong because you know all of it. But you know you, you've written this three years ago. It's probably time to to revamp, right? A hundred percent. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Just a, a, this is more of a nerdy question, and yeah, it's a nerdy question. How? much knowledge do you have about the the data of your website like do you know what people are doing when they're on your website do you use any analytics stuff i have analytics on it i just don't really look at it okay well that that's yeah. step one done you know what that is i would probably say every single website owner in the world <laughs> that's the stage they're at we've got analytics in it but that's about as far as we've got and it's it's actually super helpful looking at the analytics not so much looking at how many people are looking at your website, especially if you're sending it as more of a brochure and a something to reference, but it's hugely important to know what they're doing when they're there. And and this goes this is across the board for everybody's websites ever. You know, if you run a blog, you need to know how many pages people are looking at and you need to know whether they're just going to the blog page or if they're looking at your email sign up, for example. If you're a product-based business, it's massively important to know which products are getting the most attention. And if a product's getting loads of attention but no sales, you need to know where that journey stops before you're able to make any educated decision on what you're going to change. And in this example, with your website, Christina, we need to know at what point are people closing or leaving your website? What pages are they looking at? Are they looking at your full portfolio? Do they make it that far? You know, what, what are they actually doing when they're there? Because that will give us more insight into which parts of the website we need to be tweaking. And 
the reason I, I'm sort of going through this, and, I, and I've made this mistake numerous times, and actually with my first business, I used to own a clothing brand called One Planet Apparel. It was gorgeous. It was the best business that ever existed ever, but nobody knew about it other than me. <laughs> and the, the website, you know, I, I redesigned that website probably five, six, seven times. And in my head, I was going, the e-commerce isn't the best thing ever. The pictures aren't good enough. The the text isn't right. The the about us page isn't right. That's why nobody's buying anything. And of course, we all know that that's not correct. We know the real reason is because I didn't tell anybody it existed. But what was really interesting to me is when I started marketing it properly, and when people were going to the website, because I was able to look at the numbers and I could see where people were falling off, that allowed me to better understand what I needed to tweak. And that was the day that I never redesigned my website ever again, because I understood which one single piece needed changing. I didn't try and revamp the whole thing, like the last seven times that I did it. So I guess that's just one really waffly, long-winded way of me saying, we just need to know the numbers. And if we understand the numbers, we're able to make better decisions. Did any of that make any sense? No, it makes a lot of sense. Like, what's the pain point or what's like? Is it difficult for them to find what they're looking for or get in touch or, yeah, like in an e-commerce setting, make that payment conversion? Like, did you make it too difficult for people? And I'm just like, ah, never, never mind. So, yeah, I think the main thing for me is making it just easy to find what they want to see. That's absolutely it. And it's there's a real balance between providing enough enough information so that people take the action you want them to take and not providing so much that they have everything. Because basically what you want them to do is go to your website, look and go, oh, this is really interesting. Here's some ideas. Here's some projects. This is cool. And then get better in touch with you. And it doesn't need to be so big that it's overwhelming that they go into your website and they never come back out again. It needs to be like there's one or two really cool projects. They go, this is inspiring. Let me go back to Christina and together we'll work on my project and my ideas. And that's all we need to do. And I think most people who are creating websites go way beyond what they actually need to get someone to the next action. So, Henry, like websites is a huge subject. What advice would you have for Christina? What are the top three things she needs to do? Where should she focus? What's the summary for your your part here that will help Christina and everyone listening to make progress? I think based, based on the conversation that we've had, I think the first and foremost in terms of a next action is prioritize your photos, prioritize what your business does, prioritize the wow moment. And that's exactly what you want people to have is as soon as they visit your website, whether you've given them context in conversation or whether you've spoken to them before or not, they need to go to your website and go, wow, that's what I need. And for your business, Christina, that should be so easy because your photos are incredible and you know, you, you shouldn't need to put any context or words next to it to say, put your brand on this. Imagine if this was yours. So I think that would be my number one tip is prioritize your photos. And this goes across all businesses. People are visual. We're visual creatures. Even if your business is difficult to take photos of, tell you what, I battled with this with Rebel Business School website for years. And I still battle with it now because it's not a necessarily interesting thing to take pictures of. Like it's a room of people. What are people. you talking about? I'm very interesting. <laughs> it's me presenting. How is that not interesting? Exactly. So it's it's always interesting navigating your business through, trying to figure out what are the right photos to use for your business. Now, obviously, Christina, yours are very simple because they are your product. That's what you're doing. So you want to make sure that you're putting your pictures at the forefront. For those of you where it's not quite as simple as that, you want to think about what is the feeling you want your clients to have? What's the end goal? What are you trying to give your clients and use photos that promote that? And just for example, that's why on the Rebel Business School website, we use pictures of small business owners and we show photos of people inspired and super happy with whatever it is they're doing, whether that's cooking or so on and so on and so on. So think about those. I think the pictures are the number one most important thing for your website. My second point, because that was only one point, I do like to talk. I don't know why you invited me on this thing, Alan. My second point is little and often. And I've said that a few times already. This isn't just for you, Christina. This is for me. This is for Alan. This is for everybody that's listening. Do little and often. 
because it doesn't matter how good at technology you are, it will always fight back and it will forever fight back. It's a nightmare. So doing little and often makes it manageable and it means that you don't want to take your laptop outside and shoot it. And just sort of on that, you know, Alan Alan makes this point a lot about the size of the action and making the to-do list manageable. And this is imperative when it comes to building your website or doing anything online with your business. Make the actions manageable, make them small, make them simple, because you're more likely to do them. If website is your action, it's never going to (laughs) happen, unless you're a web designer, of course. And that sort of nicely segues into my third piece of advice. Don't talk to a web designer about what you need to do with your website unless you want to pay them for it. And I'm saying this at risk of destroying my own side hustle. But my reason for saying that is exactly why you wouldn't ask an insurance broker what insurance you need, because they there's a vested interest, they're biased. What you should do is talk to a customer or somebody who understands and somebody that you would sell to what your website needs to do differently. Because I guarantee, Christina, if you sent your website to maybe a previous client or maybe a potential client, if you want to do some outreach and go, what's missing from here? What do you think needs to change? What Does it fill the needs that you have? Does it talk to you? Does it not? What, what do you think should be different? Because I guarantee you'll learn more from that conversation than a web designer could ever teach you. Web designers know how to build good websites. They don't know how to be good clients. And that's my three. Henry, really insightful as always. I love that. Yes. And we regularly repeat, repeat at the pop-up business school, don't go to the bank and ask them if you should borrow money. Don't go to the barber and ask them if you should get a haircut. I love the insurance one. Don't go to an insurance agent and ask them what insurance you need because they will tell you about every insurance that is out there to offer. There's a different question to ask and a different thing to do. Christina, what have you taken from this web, website episode? What, what has hit you? What have you taken? What are you going to do? What are you thinking? I think, so I think the number one thing is just shifting, I think overall, like working towards like a new version, not all at once, but like shifting how it presents, you know, from the moment you put the URL, instead of having this homepage, it's like this like thing with the fancy banner that's covering up the actual thing we're selling is really making it focus more on like the work, the photography right off the bat and really going right into the showpiece, I guess. So really, you know, yeah, working towards that shift, setting in my, my schedule, like daily, even if it's 30 minutes website, like look at something, add something, five minutes. Yeah. I don't know. Think about it. Yeah. (laughs) Decide one thing to do. Like just put a daily website task. That's like tiny. And just on your first point there about the image right at the front, I had this vision whilst you were speaking of an image that is the drink or the person drinking it or the food, the photography of your lights and your setup and you taking the photo. So you almost need someone with a camera to take the photo of you doing what you do so that people can see everything you do in one image. Like here's Christina. She's capturing the perfect image. It's got the amazing food. It's got everything in one go. And that I just wanted to share with you, that's the image I saw. Because I think if if we as businesses can get one image that gets people to get what we do in a heartbeat, like they look at it and go, I've got it. She takes amazing photos. That's the, the main item that she does. And they've got it. That for us, like Henry has said, has been the bane of our lives. Like how do you capture helping people to build a business with no debt in one image? Like very difficult, but we can capture happy business owners that are making money and having fun. And that's the output that we create. And despite how many times I've told Henry that my face will sell the courses, I think happy business owners sell us it far better. There's always a place for it. It just might not be the first thing. I still don't understand that comment. Christina. (laughs) Yeah, that makes sense. Um, Because you, you say like, if I have one photo that I'm able to share, because you're like, well, I've done all these projects, but they're all very specific. So they might not necessarily... You're like, oh, that's a nice photo, but it doesn't tell you necessarily even what I do. So I like that. It's like a, it's a story in a photo. But yeah, I think it's just going to be 
daily instead of like putting it off and not touching the whole thing for three years. It's going to be some daily thought at the very least, you know, I can use my one note to like be like, oh, here's little things or dropping photos that I later want to like upload. I think that's that's the main thing. And doing that with everything we discussed in mind for those are the where I'm going to start moving it towards. And I can start working, start with like creating, like you said, like one portfolio page or one project showcase page. That is absolutely perfect. That is exactly what we want. And I think the closing message from me today is when people launch their business, they have an idea of what the perfect website is going to be. They have this thought, my perfect website is this, and it's grand, and it's beautiful, and it's incredible, and they've got it in their head. And then it's so big that they never start because they never actually reach that perfect vision of what it is. And there's no such thing as a perfect website. It doesn't exist. No such thing. You'll constantly be updating it. We've had the Rebel Business School website for eight or nine years now, and it's been on a lot of versions. And if you're ever interested, I'll show you version one. Henry will cringe. I will cringe. I built version one on a free piece of software, but it got 50 people to turn up at the first event and it was enough. Then we did version two and then version three. You will never get to version two, three, four, unless you just start tweaking what you've got and building it. So to everyone listening to this, your challenge for today is to go to your website and change one thing to make it slightly better. Change the title, change the header image, change the call to action. I don't care what it is. Take an action and change one thing on your website. If you do that, you're on the journey to a better website. And I think everyone should take a screenshot of their website now before they do that, because it's always really helpful to look back in like six months and be like, wow, how far I've come. It makes you feel really good. And sometimes slightly painful to look back and see how bad you were in the old days. Uh, <laughs> Take that screenshot, start working on the website. Christina is right. Henry Nicholson, thank you for coming on the Rebel Entrepreneur Coaching Series and being part of it. You've been great. Thank you. Christina, you are awesome as always. Let's do this again in about three to four weeks. Let's check in on your website. We'll do the next version. Henry, will you come back and help us? That depends. Are you paying me? Currently, yes. <laughs> it's really good. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> so henry's in yeah i'll be here i wouldn't miss it for the world uh christina we will check in on your website in about three or four weeks time to see what's happened with these minor tweaks and i'm really excited thank you everyone for listening to the rebel entrepreneur coaching series please go out there and start making tweaks to your website now you can have any life you want to choose to build something cool choose to take action choose to work to make your dreams become reality Stand out, be different, be yourself, be a rebel entrepreneur.